Welcome. I have a video today about the basics of using Auto-Tune. Um, in Tuner Studio or Megasquirt products, it is called Tune Analyze Live, Tune for you, uh, but it's most commonly referred to as Auto-Tune. Now, there are some tips and tricks and things to look out for if you have never used Auto-Tune. Um, it can be an amazing tool. It is very helpful, especially if you're trying to tune by yourself. Uh, but it can also really cause you some heartache and problems if it isn't set up correctly. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, if you have the paid version of Tuner Studio, it is a tab uh, right here kind of in the center. You can click it and it opens up to this screen here. Auto-Tune is a feature in the software that is designed to take your wideband O2 sensor uh, information, it takes the air fuel ratio from that sensor and compares it to the air fuel ratio target table in your uh, Tuner Studio here and then manipulates the fuel table to match the AFR target table. So, say here at uh, 200 kPa, so about 14 psi of boost and 4300 RPMs, you want an 11 1 air fuel ratio. Well, your sensor in the exhaust is constantly sending information into the mega squirt and say it tells us, the sensor tells us that we're getting a 12-0. Well, it's going to compare that 12-0 to this AFR target table and say, hey, we need an 11-1. So let's go take this cell right here at 4300 and 200 kPa and increase the fuel like this, increase that fuel uh, cell right here until there's enough fuel provided that it matches this 11-1 target. Okay, that sounds very simple and straightforward, and it is if everything is set up correctly, and that is a big caveat. Uh, the biggest problem with uh, setting up uh, auto-tune is that everything must be correct. And when I say everything, uh, it's everything from like your O2 sensor being, uh, you know, calibrated and correcting correctly functioning, uh, the settings in Tuner Studio for your wideband being correct, having a accurate and reasonable air fuel target table, which I have another video on you can check out, and then making sure the advanced settings in Tuner Studio are correct. If these are not correct, it can really mess up your fuel table. So you just need to be careful. So let's start going over those right now. All right, the first one we can uh, go over is this air fuel target table. So under fuel settings, you need to go to AFR target table one and make sure you have a target table that is has reasonable values and for every load area and RPM um, have a reasonable AFR target that is suitable for your engine and setup. Okay, with that being said, we can move on to the next step. The next most crucial piece is to have your wideband installed correctly and calibrated right. Uh, I've seen this many times where it's not set up right and it gives poor results. So the first thing you wanna do is go into tools up here, calibrate AFR table, and choose the correct wideband sensor. So uh, Megasquirt um, Tuner Studio has a lot of presets here uh, for different uh, standard widebands you'd see in the industry. However, if you uh, don't have one of these widebands, you can click Custom Linear Wideband, and it allows you to enter the voltage range and AFR range of your particular air fuel ratio gauge. So for example, this AEM 304110, uh, if you go into the manual on this wideband controller, which is one that I have, you can go to this table and it gives you a voltage. Uh, it gives you a voltage to AFR chart here. So you can put in zero volts to 499 and 10 AFR to 19.98, which you can see is exactly what I have in here. And then write to controller. After you're done with this, it's not over. You need to go over here on the left where your air fuel ratio gauge is displayed in Tuner Studio, like in the cluster here. 
and make sure when the car is just idling and revving a little bit that the controller display from your wideband and the uh, number you see here in Megasquirt are very similar. They can be a little bit off, maybe, you know, uh, you know, a quarter of a point or something. There is some fluctuation between the controller display and the display that you see in Tuner Studio, but they need to be pretty dang close. And just make sure that's right. Make sure that your wideband is uh, placed correctly. Um, a lot of wideband uh, controller, um, a lot of wideband controllers have a, a manual and it will tell you how they expect that to be installed. There's a certain angle in the pipe and a certain distance from the exhaust valve that this needs to be placed to get the most accurate reading. Make sure that's installed. That will that will help you greatly and that there's no air leaks in your exhaust system and things like that. Okay. Once that is set up and you have it calibrated, you have your AFR target table set up correctly, now we can use um, Auto-Tune. So if you click on the Auto-Tune tab, VE Analyze Live, and go to Advanced Settings. So over here on the right, click Advanced Settings, and we can start making some changes here. So the first thing you wanna look at is the authority limits. The maximum cell value change, this number is the number of units in the fuel table that it can change. So say right here you have 90. The most that you will allow tuner or the auto tune to change this fuel table is 10, uh, 10 values. So it'll go up to 100 or down to 80, um, depending on uh, if it's rich or lean. So you're only giving it authority to change this 10 values. Um, so you can start, if you're doing a course start, you can set this at like 10 and uh, this percentage change, you could also set that to about eight to 10. When you have this set at eight, this percentage change, this allows uh, Auto-Tune to change the AFR by about one point. So if you're at 14.0 air fuel, it'll allow it to go to like 13.0 or 15.0 uh, within one point at 8%. I watched a video of Andy Whittle who does uh, a lot of Megasquirt products. And this was uh, a question I asked him directly. And he stated that 8% on the maximum cell percentage change will allow you to change up to one AFR. So if you're doing a rough tune, your your motors or your mega squirt has just been installed, you need to tune it out. Use eight percent, and I would leave this at about uh, ten um, cell change value. Okay. Once you get your once you do a rough tune, uh, you can go back and change this to about five percent or four percent, which would be a half point AFR, um, and then let it uh, let it run in that scenario for a little while and maybe change this down to like uh you know five so set this to five and like four percent and this will be more fine tuning so it won't let it change the table as much it limits you know the range that it changes the air fuel okay uh the next one are these filters so rpm range it's uh the minimum and maximum rpm range so here, your maximum RPM range can be basically the highest your engine will rev. So, I mean, you could set it to like 7,500. For this case, this motor revs to 7,500. And uh, the RPMs in which you want to tune the motor uh, kind of depends. What I typically do when I'm tuning a turbocharged engine is I will only let Tuner Studio tune a certain part of the table and you can block that off with these filters. So uh, for example, I will tune you know, the low idle areas kind of by hand because those are very difficult for auto-tune to, to figure out. There's a lot of fluctuations, so I don't usually let it tune anything near the idle. Uh, you, you can, you can try it uh, with very low percentages, but I haven't found it to be that helpful compared to just sitting there and manipulating these numbers around the idle area by hand. Okay, so I usually set this just to start out, depending on what your motor revs to, you know, 1500 to 2000, somewhere in here. And basically what that does is it allows you 
it only allows the Tuner Studio to see like this part of the table. Over here on the left where it's not grayed out, it doesn't even see those values because you've filtered out um, the lower RPM range. The same can be done with the fuel load. So here, the minimum fuel load 90, I have been just tuning the boost areas of the map. So what I did was I came in here and I set it to 90 and 2000. And so this area where it goes up into boost and uh, from 2000 to 7500 uh, is the only place that I'm letting Tuner Studio uh, work on the map, um, the auto tune adjust the map. And what's nice about this is you can you can set up like a specific area. Maybe you just want your cruise. You just want to set your cruise area kind of in here. Um, you just want this to be tuned. You can set the parameters to those RPM ranges and those fuel load ranges uh, just to tune this one specific area while you're driving around. Maybe you've got your boost area all hashed out and you don't need to adjust that. Uh, I usually just set the minimum coolant temperature to 160. Whatever your operating temperature is, you know, somewhere in that range, 160, 180, I, I let it warm up, you know, make sure the motor's burning everything uh, efficiently and it has a, a, a good heat in the in the head and the and the intake valve before letting uh, auto-tune do its thing, okay? This cell change resistance, you can mess around with this. Um, basically, what it will do is it'll make it, more difficult or more easy for uh, auto-tune to change a cell. Uh, so, you know, the, the harder it is and the less percentage change you give uh, auto-tune, the less it will be able to change the table. So you can kind of set this up to make a coarse adjustment and a fine adjustment, okay? Um, the next thing that you can do is uh, make sure that this reference table, the AFR target, is set to view AFR table one. What that's doing is that is that is choosing the reference table for auto-tune um, to, to compare the wideband sensor data against. So in this case, AFR table one is the default and my AFR table one here in fuel settings is what it will be comparing the, the sensor data to change the table for, okay? Uh, one other thing you can do is you can lock areas of the map. So, for example, if you wanted to just give it free reign and say, you know, you know, 500 and 500 RPM to 7500, this whole range, and 30 kPa to 300, so you give it the whole map, but you want to lock out certain areas that you have figured out, you can go and highlight these areas and uh, right-click it here and um, you can actually lock selected cells. So say you have your idle sorted out like right here and you don't want that touched because you've got it all sorted out and you don't want to you know, have anything break, you can lock. And what it will do is basically it makes it so that uh, Auto-Tune cannot see any of these values or it can't touch them, can't change it. So it'll tune all the way around it, but it won't touch your idle. And I do this quite frequently on cars that I tune because I'll work on the idle, you know, for quite a while, an hour or so, just trying to get it really dialed in and perfect. And I don't want those fuel settings being touched. Um, you can also unlock those cells as well and set it back to normal. Um, but that's one other trick you can do. You can lock cells anywhere you want, filter out certain areas where you just want it to be uh, tuning. So maybe you have like, you've adjusted your wastegate and you want to do a high boost setting and you just want it to touch some of these areas in the higher boost, but your table is working really well, you can just filter that out, okay? Um, that's pretty much it for a basics introduction to getting your wideband right, or sorry, your tuner studio settings um, for uh, auto-tune correct. This is uh, just some things that I've run into over the years, and if they're not correct, it might mess up your table, add or take out fuel rapidly or, or sporadically. So Tuner Studio, uh, the tune for you, can be an amazing tool, really help you, or it can really screw up your, uh, your fuel map, and in really bad cases, if you're not watching it and your, your setup is broken, or you have a bad sensor, or your settings aren't correct, 
it could potentially damage your engine if you weren't watching it going into boost and it was leaning out um, certain things uh, in your fuel map, certain areas. So uh, that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any other questions. I'll see if I can help you. And thanks for watching.